Captain on the bridge. All right, captains, we are back on the bridge. And today, yes, we got some things to go over from the Stowe Arc site, along with the official Twitter feeds. So on screen. Yes, captains, before we get into this video, do us a huge favor, hit that like button. Also, if you're new here, welcome. Consider subscribing here to YouTube Bridge as we're always on the lookout for like-minded captains where we can share our love, our passion for Star Trek Online, but also things Star Trek. Now, with that said, here we go. Captains, we have a Phoenix Prize Pack event, and this was on the Arc Stowe site here. So we're gonna go over that. Of course, anything that we go over will be in the description below, but we'll also go through them, give our ECs in this video, and of course, at the end, give our conclusion. So here we go. So we're launching a special event with the Phoenix Prize Pack on a PC from April 27th until May 4th. So as of this video drop, this will be today. So actually no, two days, sorry, tomorrow. So April 27th, right now this is gonna be dropping on the 26th. So you'll be able to pick up a free Phoenix Prize Pack from Grimm on Drazon Station or Ona on Deep Space Nine once per day. These prize packs contain the prizes of the past, allowing you to access to the weapons, items, and ships you may have missed over the years in Star Trek Online. You can see a full list of the prizes contained within below. The Phoenix Prize Pack is a special pack purchased with Dilithium or obtained for free during this event. Opening it grants you a token of one of five rarities. You can redeem that token for a list of prizes on that rarity tier. But that's not all. During this limited time event, the experimental ship Starship upgrade tokens are returning to the Phoenix prize pack. You'll be able to exchange Phoenix prize pack tokens for a single experimental ship upgrade in the following amount. So five will give you the, so five ultra rare will give you a experimental ship upgrade, 20 of the very rare and a hundred of the rare for that T6X upgrade. Here's a full list of the prizes you can win by rare. Now, captains, we just did a recent series of videos for First Contact Day Fleet Tribute, and there was a weapon that I kept actually going on. I said it was very rare. I am going to correct myself. It's ultra rare, and that's the prolonged engagement set here. Before it wasn't a very rare, that's why when they made these changes, I got, I. I forgot they moved it up a rank there because they changed the actual names of and or the tier names of the Phoenix Prize packs rewards. So the prolonged engagement phaser, beam array, phaser dual cannons, photon torpedo, a set that I highly recommend is in the ultra rare tier. I love using the prolonged engagement photon torpedo because it actually has 180 degree firing arc. Now in terms of recommendations, we've made this before, but in the Epic Bajoran Interceptor 100%, I really do recommend that ship. The Kobali Samsar Cruiser does have a console that actually matches the flagship sort of set that comes from like the Bordescue, the, I believe the Odyssey of course as well. So there's that as well, but the Bajoran Interceptor is one I would really go for because it has the domino and I do mention that and use that in a lot of my builds because of the bonuses of that clicky. Ultra rare, of course, I've mentioned the prolonged engagement set, but that of course is up to you. A lot of other things that are good here. Of course, you can get the Zephyrm Cochrane shotgun there. That is also fun for Ziberg. And then of course you have the very rare, very rare, I should say. And of course, in my ground slots, I always say that Neil Falconer is there helping us in space. That is a great, great, Dov to help you against the bird because it gives you increased damage against them. And if you're doing Admiralty, of course, the VSS Tanius Admiralty ship, of course, you can go over this list. I'm just giving my kind of quick recommendations like I always do, especially if you're near, new here on the user bridge or new to stow. Those are the things that I recommend, but go over these, you know, again, they can all have their uses, but of course the ships are ships and all of them are now tier six. So of course they can get you through any content in the game. You got a bunch of buff officers here, some rare items like the Peren Fangs. Those, are, that's fun. That's fun, but you also get to get like pets and stuff like that, and or widgets and doohickeys like the Future Flyer Power Board, which is an ode to Back to the Future. So there's that. Some costumes, of course, and then 
the one thing, if you have got everything, the one thing that we always recommend is the Phoenix Tech Upgrade Kit. This is how we upgrade most of our stuff. And if you can wait, wait for an upgrade weekend. So get these now and then get it for the Phoenix Tech Upgrade. And then if you can wait for an upgrade weekend, use it then to get the most out of your upgrade. So again, this is gonna start captains on the 27th and it'll go till May 4th. So there's that. So now we'll head over to the official Twitter feeds. There was a stream from Cryptic here. So slight shift in plans. Fam, I guess I didn't think would be available. Turns out to be available. So Travis joins us tonight to talk about some upcoming quality of life changes to the exchange. So we are going to go over to just kind of the YouTube playback here. And you see here, of course, it is Senior Community Manager Mike Vadum, soft Staff Software Engineer Travis Dattleman and lead software engineer Keith Rose. For some reason, it is escaping me. He, did, he is a Twitch streamer right now and it's escaping me. Captain, let me know below if you, are, it's escaping me. I always raid him, he raids me. We, we know each other via Twitch, but he is also a Twitch streamer and he works on stove. So that is a great, great thing. He decided to come on the stream, but we're gonna go over the notes and of course, Props to the Sajukar for giving this notes here. We're just gonna go over it quickly, nothing too crazy. There wasn't too long of a stream, but we're gonna go over this. So we've been seeing this here. The invalid entity name issue is seemingly fixed internally, but we've still been seeing this. So that's a fix internally. Something about hairstyles here, it'll be that. The Texas class on console is coming soon. So I'm just gonna go over the notes that I kind of want to go over here. Of course, like I said, we will link this below in the descriptions for you captains to go over there. Titan A slash the new Connie slash the Enterprise G is being planned and or worked on right now. So I kind of knew, or at least not knew, my guess was that they were going to wait until the season was over to see what the Titan did on screen so that when they port it over to Stowe, it will have whatever it did there on screen, which I guess all it did was fire phasers, fire photons, have the Riker Maneuver 2.0 where it would yeet an asteroid towards you. It has a cloaking device. So I, 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 I'm gonna be t uh, making my guess right now, this is probably gonna be an Intel ship. Wouldn't mind if it was a command ship, but that's fine. You did fire fo photon torpedoes a lot, but I can work with anything that they make the ship out of. I'll be happy to get it. And this means this is about a three to six month turnaround, I'd say. So what is it now? As of this video, it is April. I'd say around summer or possibly fall is when you get the ship is my guess. So now there's that the upcoming update to the exchange and trade. So I thought this was pretty interesting here. So cabs will no longer be able to conduct trades that would cause them to exceed EC limit. EC and items gained on the exchange will be mailed to players to prevent EC loss due to being near cap. So that's pretty cool. Captains won't be able to take EC from the mail that would cause them to exceed the EC cap. Captains will no longer be able to refine the lithium if it would cause them to exceed the lithium cap. So again, kind of just a improvement there, ensuring that players don't lose on any EC or the lithium. I think that's pretty cool. Our max dilithium refine will stop if already at the max dilithium limit, which is 10 million. We've been there before. Delete mail button will be disabled on mail with attachments until attachments are removed, so you can't actually delete mail with EC slash items attached to it. Pretty cool. Many of these systems will just silently fail on the player's part if they try to refine slash pull more out than they can hold. Others will inform you that you are at the cap and thus can't pull any more via a text fly-in message. The deluxe will allow you to pull a deal in partially. So if you have room for like 500 deal, but 1000 deal on the exchange, you can pull 500 of that 1000. Mail will require you to have a full, the full space necessary to pull items out of the mail. Makes sense. Changes were made because Cryptic felt like a lot of people were losing resources by accidentally going over the cap. Now I've heard of this over the years. Knock on wood, we have not had that experience. So hopefully that it will indeed happen. Again, I, when this was, I've been told via messages, via, via DMs that they're losing things over the, 
from their ships, from the inventory, and all I can say is, well, it's never happened to me. Again, knock on wood, that never does happen to me, but hopefully this change will stop that. And because it felt like it always also was happening to the same captains over and over again, so which kind of sucked. But it's great that they're addressing it. Changes will be live tomorrow for all platforms. So that's good. So that's on all bridges there. Mails from Cryptic and the auction house have no limit. So even if your mailbox is full of other mails, the Cryptic auction house mails will always go through. So back to three of the stream, the Travis, Stan Alman, Software, and Keith talking about things like the process they go through system they added to the game like reengineering endeavors, the B Critter Tech, various search bars on UI. So the gender, 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 gender change in Stow isn't that hard to implement itself. There's a bunch of other things associated with gender changes that the team doesn't currently think it's worth the cost. I thought they were gonna just actually just make this work, but I'm not sure if that is a thing anymore, but. Uh, so here's a bit of cool news here. So Stow has, now has an official DPS parser built in game. There's UI programming work needed to make it more usable, but players can use it currently via the following commands. So there it is, GCL combat stat in it. <laughs> stat I-N-I-T one starts the parser and then GCL combat stat data zero space zero space zero displays the data. The zeros can be the ones to give more data. All right, so there you go. I, I, the long, a long time ago when I was somewhat chasing the DPS, I did have a parser. And to be honest, I actually did get obsessed with the numbers and, you know, I learned a lot from it. It's a great tool to have. And right now it is an outside third program that a lot of the DPSers use. And again, when my laptop failed years ago, that's when I got Stow back, I did not reinstall the So DPS parser. And sometimes I just kind of rely on feel now. And or when people that I fly with tell me how I did, which is great. I, again, I don't play for that in the majority. I will dabble in it, but you know, I will take other suggestions anyways. Uh, help of like, let's say, you know, casual SAB, AKA Spencer, Nick, McStud, t you know, telling me, try this, try this, sure. And I'll just be there going to the positions, hitting space bar. Really, it's a fun thing to do and it's a part of the game that you can explore. And it's great now that they have a parser that you can, we can utilize to see how you're doing. So give it a shot, maybe I will too as well. I kind of have a general idea of how my build will do anyways. And again, for me, as long as I get to the content that I play, I'm happy. And that's the most important thing is that one, you're happy, you have, you're playing for your immersion. And if DPS chasing is your thing, great. And you can still keep using the third party one, but now they're working on this and it seems like there's gonna be a lot more work on this. So look out for that and it's great. I think it's good for those people who want to use it and who want to fine tune their builds to always improve their ship. So Cryptic is trying to make it where you can copy a loadout from one ship to another. It uses best approximation when moving gear from one ship to another when slots aren't exactly the same. So last night when we were on streaming on the YouTube bridge, a, I've encountered a bug that I've never encountered before. I was on my Romulan working on the legendary Valdor. And when I was getting the Domino console, from the Bajoran Interceptor, the one we talked about earlier there. I got it as an event prize, so I can always reclaim that. I claimed the ship, and in doing so, claimed the console, put that on my ship, but I didn't, what had happened was it actually put me in the Bajoran Interceptor. That has never happened to me before, nor have I ever heard that happening to anyone. So that was quite interesting. Nature guy did a, submit report of that because it did happen live while we were streaming so a huge shout out to you sir thank you for that i that thought that was pretty funny and it took me a while to get out of that ship it didn't matter if i changed ships it, i would warp in and out i'd go to space dock change ships there it just took a while and finally it just kind of worked i can't even remember what i did i'll have to look at the stream but that was an interesting bug and the loadouts have always been something of a an issue even with a, a build and or loadout that I saved 
all of a sudden my bridge officers will just nope out of there and it, that's happened to me and quite a bunch of other captains too so there's that thought that was interesting to kind of throw in there separate ground at space loadout is something travis wants to to do could possibly work in the future since they aren't doing as many big new features and are focusing more on quality of life stuff interesting that's an interesting feature or statement right there or a bit of news that it's all about quality of life i mean i'm sure that we're still going to get major stories major updates in terms of future arcs ships all that stuff so we'll see how they do here in the next couple of years especially with all the trek that is going on that has you know that will be going on so that'll always be a factor as well pet tab would be pretty he said, make according to Travis Keith, it's mostly up to the design team if the players want to have it. Yeah, that'd be great, I think. Loader issues, explanations. It was an easy design by someone at Cryptic. Parts of it had too many cooks in it, trying to push it too many directions. It's a complex system since it's moving items power around, which makes it easier to break. Loadouts were written earlier in someone's carrier, so there's a lot of code that's duplicated and spread around the same slash similar things. This makes it hard to track down all the places where something goes wrong, or you catch three of them but miss the fourth because you didn't know the other system was there. Code has been cleaned up a lot since then. Well, it, 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 it's been cleaned so it hasn't been fixed, so it's an ongoing thing. It's a great feature when it works. I would say it works more often than not. I, I give it a 60% working chance whenever I switch loaders, but it has worked decently for me over the years other than what i had just mentioned there recently with me switching into a ship that i didn't ready i was in there and or my bridge officers noping out of there for no reason so it is what it is it gets frustrating but it's nothing that i rage quit over at least for now and last little news here cryptic isn't going to make changes to try to make the game much or match i should say up with picard specifically the nth g thing interesting they'll just keep doing what they have been doing for the last few years making stories that sometimes feature cast members from the show stowe isn't going to massively change the world we play in isn't going anywhere anytime soon so that's that's good i don't mind them not being part of canon in terms of story wise matching up i've always treated stowe as a separate timeline and even with my tunes, my alts, I treat that as alternate timeline there as well, or alternate realities. So I just go with that, works in my head, and you know, the Enterprise G thing, spoiler alert, with the Titan becoming that, they can do whatever they want. I think it's fine. I think it gives it its own little flair and edge. As long as they try to keep getting more voice actors and i hope in the future they just give us more story more often is kind of what i'm wanting so thought we would go over that quickly again huge huge shout out to the sajukar for the rundown here i will have this of course in the description below so again to recap captains we have a phoenix prize pack that will be starting on pc on the 27th and then there you can go get your free phoenix prize pack daily and so don't miss out on that at least you can again if you have everything from the past events and everything you want from the phoenix prize pack get the ultimate tech upgrades or i should say the phoenix tech upgrades of course it's in the rare tier and of course my recommendation especially if you love canon with one n builds the prolonged engagement photon torpedo and of course some interesting notes of the recent 10 forward streams so this video will be releasing on the 26th and we will kind of keep a tab on all this things that we've just realized or just went over here and of course see how the new changes if they go fine and or if something else goes and creates a new feature quote unquote new feature here in Star Trek Online so there it is captains do us a huge favor hit that like button also comment below let us know what you're looking forward to and if you've tried that parser let us know what you think of it and of course, subscribe to the YouTube Bridge, and we will leave it on this note. Live long and prosper.